Welcome to Ahqam SOS, the show that discusses religious duties and practices of Muslims by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'aj. Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh Na. Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh Na, we've been discussing Salah, we've discussed many uh, topics in regards to uh, Adhan, uh, the, where, where to pray, the Maqam of the Musalli. We've even discussed other miscellaneous topics and questions. Let's continue our actual discussion on salah. Let us go into what are the actual, what are the obligatory acts of salah? As in, I, I know you know the, the common ones that we know about is wudu and 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 uh, you know niyyah and facing qibla. But surely there's more to more to salah than that. A'udhu billah as an ali min al shaytan al rajim. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al tayyibin al tahirin. The wajib acts of salah are 11. There are 11 wajibat in the salah in which we have to uh, apply them and if we don't then the salah will become void and batil. Um, five of these 11 are known to be arkan or rukun which means the fundamentals of the wajib okay. and um, the rest there are sl slight difference between them and the rest I'll inshallah mention in detail but the rukun and the key elements of the salah these five are important to know because um, with intention or without intention would cause the salah to be batal and void so that's important with regard to the key elements or the rukun of the salah let me mention the list in which states the um, the wajibat of the salah. Now there are eleven. The first one is the niyyah or the intention. Okay. That's very clear. To start any worship, you need uh, the full intention and the niyyah before entering into any ibadah, be it hajj, <coughs> be it fasting, be it salah itself. You must have the full intention. Uh, seeking nearness to Allah SWT. Um, the second wajib in the salah is the qiyam or uh, the standing upright in other words in the state of qiyam and you perform the salah that's wajib again this is divided into uh, the qiyam in, in which it is rukun and the qiyam which is not rukun again we'll discuss okay. it inshallah later the third one is the takbiratul ihram, yes. saying Allahu Akbar. That's wajib. That's you must say Allahu Akbar in the salah. That's the first one that we do when we have to raise the hands. Exactly. The loud one that we say. You have to start and open the prayers with uh, takbiratul ihram. Yes. That's the key to open the prayers. Um, number four is the qira'ah or recitation of the alhamd and al surah. That's also wajib. <coughs> number five is the ruku'ah. Or bowing, yes. so ruku' is also wajib, and you must uh, perform this act within the salah. And followed by number six, sujood or prostration. In other words, you must do the sujood as well. One or two? Uh, of course, two together. So they come as a pair. Exactly. You have to perform the pair. Not that you've performed one sujood. That's enough. In no, both together. Okay. And. Of course, we'll go basically and discuss uh, the two, is it rukun, one is it rukun or not, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, number seven is dhikr, or saying the, uh, the dhikr in, this, in the ruku' itself, or sujood okay. itself. Subhana rabbil azimi wa bihamdi, al ala wa bihamdi, and so forth. Number eight is the tashahud mm -hmm. in, the, in the salah. Ashadu an la ilaha la wahdu la shurikhada, to the end of the uh, tashahud saying. Number nine. The ninth wajib is the salam when you say salam at the end to, to end the salah exactly yes number 10 is the order or the sequence of the ah, acts so you start with takbir haram and then yeah. hamd surah ruku' sujood and so forth and number 11 
is to continue these acts, continuation of the acts, so okay. you don't leave long gap. Oh, I see, I see. So you don't say Allah Akbar and you keep quiet for five minutes. Mm -hmm. You have to continue one after another act. Um, so these are the main uh, wajibat of the salah, and as I've said, they are divided into rukun, key elements, and non rukun, uh, which are not the key elements of the uh, salah. So, Shaykh, what are considered to be rukun then? What are the key elements? The key elements of the salah are five. Number one is the niyyah or the intention. As stated in the first um, uh, list of the obligatory wajibat. Number two is the takbir to ihram itself. Okay. Number three is the qiyam. The qiyam, which is standing upright, but in which state? In two main states only. Yes. You stand upright and you are in the state of qiyam when you do takbir to ihram, Allahu Akbar. Yes. You must be standing upright. And in the other condition is when you want to go to the ruku' heading to the ruku' Okay. So you finish the surah, and then you say Allahu Akbar. You go to the ruku' Before going to your ruku', you must be in the state of qiyam and upright. Okay. Um, also, number five or number four is the ruku' itself. Yes. The ruku' itself is also a key element and rukun in the salah. And finally, number five is the sujood. Yes. But the two sajda together. Sajda mm -hmm. Two prostrations. They are uh, known to be as um, arkan of salah in overall. That's nice. But can you elaborate a little bit on the first rukun, um, the intention? I mean, do we actually have to say it? Can we just think it? Does I mean, isn't it clear enough that I'm standing for Salah? The, the fact that I've done wudu, I'm facing Qibla, I'm, st I'm standing on the prayer mat, isn't that enough to show my intention that I'm praying Salah? Initially, the intention and the niyyah is wajib because we have an act of worship. You're entering it through an act of worship. So you must have this intention in your heart. You don't have to utter, utter the, uh, the niyyah. Let's say I pray... Asr Salah, seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, you can just keep it in your mind that you are starting the Asr Salah or the morning Salah, for example. Having this in your mind, that's fine. That's enough to open the Salah with. So intention is so important that without the intention, the Salah will be batil and, and void. So that's important that we keep it in our mind. Um, intention is important. And uh, I've mentioned this in the previous episodes or series that um, الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَلِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى It's a hadith which says that all our deeds begins with uh, intention. And whatever you have in intended to do, then you get to, to what you've intended. So niyyah is important, especially in the ibadat. We have to fulfill the niyyah, uh, which is seeking nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykhna, what are the rulings in regards to riya, uh, as in showing off while in prayer? I mean, am I not still praying? Isn't it enough that I'm, I'm doing all the wajibat, I'm doing all the ruqan in the salah? Does riya, does, does that have an effect on my prayer and its validity? You see, salah is ibadah. And to start the ibadah and the worship um, with the intention of um, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking this closeness to Allah, the Almighty, it must be solely and only for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mushkila uh, with the riya and the problem is that if you share other than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in your prayers or in your worship, then that ibadah will be void and batil. So if you start praying in a, let's say, public place, and you want to show off your friends, others, that you're praying uniquely, better than the others, 
you know you can utter the hamd and surah in an eloquent way for example in arabic for example uh, in, in a way in which others can't because they are not arab speakers for example and you want to show off then that ibadah that salah will be batil and the riya or showing off it doesn't matter if it's from the first rak'ah to the last rak'ah or just part of the salah we must offer the prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full intention and full devotion to him subhanahu wa ta'ala so any lack of niyyah or uh, showing off or anything that breaks the salah will eventually lead to the salah to be batil oh, wow. and we have to redo it again so the riyah is one of those acts in which will make the salah void of course and of course um, with regard to the intention oh, I just want to mention this before we move to the next question that the intention must be continued from the beginning to the end okay so continuous intention you keep the intention of praying till the end that's important that we keep in mind that we are praying from the beginning of the <coughs> takbir al-haram till as salam in the salah that's important awesome. thank you very much Sheikhna, what about the qiyam or standing upright? I mean, is all types of standing upright uh, in salah, are, are, are all of them rukun? So, when you have the qiyam at the beginning, the qiyam al haram, and then we have the standing before the ruku, the standing after the ruku, the standing after the sujood, are these all part of the rukun? Well, initially, the qiyam itself is rukun and is a key element in the salah, but where? in two main places. Number one is wajib and mandatory to stand upright when we perform the takbir of al-ihram in the very beginning. So we have to make sure that we are upright in the state of qiyam and we say Allahu Akbar. That's very important. And because it's rukun, it means that if we were, let's say, leaning to the wall or bowing down and saying Allahu Akbar, even if it was uh, unintentional, the salah will be batil. Mm -hmm. So we, mu we must make sure that uh, we do Allahu Akbar in uh, full stationary and of course to be upright without leaning to the left or the right. And that is of course rukun. In other words, um, key element. So if we did it intentionally or unintentionally the salah will be void and batil and in the other case is when we want to go to the ruku'ah so we finish the surah let's say tawheed then we say allahu akbar we want to go to this uh, ruku'ah we must make sure that we are in the position of qiyam so the other wajib which is a non rukun it's a non fundamental but it's wajib mm -hmm. In other words, if you do it intentionally, it, it will uh, make awesome. your salah batil and void. But if it's unintentional, then the, the salah is, is valid and, and it's fine. You can continue. And that is when you are in the state of qiyam yes. and you're reciting hamd and surah. You must be in the state of upright and you, you, you recite the hamd and surah. You cannot lean to the wall mm. or be in the state of bowing down and record, for example, and you read the Hamd and Surah. But if this happens unintentionally, that's fine. You can continue. So <coughs> you're upright back again, and you do you, re you read the Hamd and Surah, and then you go to the Ruku'ah and Sujood. So in this state, it won't uh, make your Salah batil and void if it was unintentional. But intentionally, it will actually uh, void the, the, the Salah, of course. Sheikh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've noticed a lot when we're praying uh, Salah in Jama'ah and I've, I've seen other people when they're praying. Um, sometimes the, the Musalli is not stationary. He's in Qiyam, you see him, but then, you know, they, 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 they swerve a little bit like this. So sometimes, you know, they, 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 they will move. Is it important to stay stationary in Qiyam? Of course, one of the wajibat and it's mandatory for the one to be stationary while praying and be motionless. Um, you cannot lean to the, to the wall or 
you cannot actually move in the salah. You must be you know, standing still and offering these prayers. Um, however, if somebody is compelled to do so, somebody who has some kind of illness or disability, and they have to lean to something, or the way they stand, that they have to you know, stand in the state of bowing down, for example, then that's fine for such conditions. They can lean to the wall, for example, or be in the state of, of, of record, for example, and they uh, recite the Hamdan Surah, for example. That's fine. But otherwise, it's wajib for the one who has no medical issues uh, to be upright in, in the salah when he's um, reading the dhikr, yes. to be stationary at all cases, rukur, sujood, and so forth, and be motionless as well. So that's important uh, for them to um, respect this rule. Shaykhna, is there any part of the salah that we are allowed to move and do the dhikr as well? Are there any exceptions? Yes, of course. With regard to being stationary or mo uh, motionless, uh, there's an exception in which you can move and utter the words, the dhikr in the salah. And that is when you're rising from your uh, sujood, last sajda, you sit and then you stand up. Okay, going into the next raqqa. Exactly. In this state, when you say, Bihawlillah wa quwwati aqum wa aqud, is there, you're allowed, um, it's not wajib to be motionless or stationary, where you can stand, while you're standing up, on your way, uh, you can say this dhikr, Bihawlillah wa quwwati aqum wa aqud, and there's no issue with it, that's fine. Okay. I mean, even though, if, if let's say, during the, uh, the salah, let's say um, a, pl a crowded place, um, you're reading the Hamd and Surah, and they wanted you to move one or two steps forward or backwards. In this case, you have to keep quiet, yes. and then just move one, one or two steps back or front, depends the position, and then you resume your, your, your dhikr or your Hamd and Surah, and that should be fine as well. So in this situation, you can move, but you have to keep quiet. I think it's a good time to mention that we always see this, uh, alhamdulillah, mashallah, and, and when, when people are praying, you know, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliki, you know, is this acceptable? Does this make your salah batil? No, of course, it won't make your salah batil, but it's better to avoid it. Uh -huh. It's um, one of those acts in which not really um, shouldn't be... Um, done by a mu'min when he stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it kind of like ruins the akhlaq of the salah, you could say. You can say yes, yes. It's, it's better to be uh, stand still. You know, you're standing before the creator of this universe and you're praying to him. So imagine if you go to, to meet the king or the queen yeah. or the president of a specific country, then <laughs> you, won't, you won't do this. Yeah, definitely not. There are etiquettes. Yes. You know, when you go to meet the queen or the king, etiquette. So, yes. I think we have to apply this much as we can in, in the salah. Awesome. See you again next time on Ahkam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.